All right, y'all, so let's jump right into this haircut tutorial. Right here, I'm using my Andes Slimline Pro Li, and I'm keeping the first initial guideline pretty low. Um, I want to give myself room to blend to the top, and we are going to get rid of most of all the green on the sides. So it's going to kind of look like a high fade, but knowing that I put my first initial guideline pretty low, it, I'm just giving myself room to blend, and that way I can get rid of the, the green. We're gonna keep the, the top, we're gonna do some scissor work on top, we're gonna um, do some point cutting, some slicing, and then um, I'm gonna kinda give him like a crop uh, textured look on top, like a style. He's getting ready for his engagement photo. Actually, he already took them. So congratulations to my boy Eddie, he's actually one of the barbers at the Sun Lake location. So if the Sun Lake location is closer to you, make sure to go see your, your you know, my boy Eddie. I, you know, I've seen this, this, this individual grow and I've seen him, you know, progress in his craft. And he's just a, genuinely a, a great friend and a great person, always keeping the client um, entertained and always having great conversations with them as well. All right, so right here, so what I did was the second guideline was the lever all the way open and then I removed it closing my lever to the closed position. Then I went to my one guard lever all the way open, put it in the middle and then closed it. Now I'm in my two guard lever all the way open and I'm using my uh, cordless seniors. So after the two guard, just because I want to keep the fade a little darker in that area, I start with the two guard first and then come back to my one and a half guard, which is the guard I had right there. Now I'm in my, I went back to my one guard, lever open, and I'm just removing like little dark areas that the one and a half guard left. You see that faint line right around that one? We're gonna attack that with the half guard. Starting with the lever open and working the way to the close position. But before we do that, I'm gonna do some clip over comb. And whenever doing, whenever you do clip or over comb, you want to make sure whenever you grab the hair, the bottom of the comb should be rested on the client's head and bringing the actual teeth of the comb towards you. You don't want to cut, unless you do like a flat top or something like that, then you could put the comb flat on the client's head. And even that, like you may find yourself bringing the, the teeth a little closer to you uh, or towards you, but, um, you really don't want to rest the comb flat on the client's head. I'm kind of coming off of the client's head, keeping the bottom of the comb flat on it. That makes sense. So I'm trying my best to kind of keep that bolt because before this haircut, he had a disconnected uh, on this side. It was like a part with a hard line. Uh, I don't know if he had a comb over or what. So I'm just trying to keep as much bulk as possible but still trying to keep that, not so much of a uh, round look, but kind of keep it square, like going straight up. All right, so right here, now we're gonna attack that bottom line with the half guard, and notice how that just brings the blend together. We're also gonna do his beard as well. We'll be using the, uh, the Tune 45 products on the top of the head. I believe I used the indestructible clay on this one, if I'm not mistaken. And you can buy all these products, the, the 245 shears, the uh, the pups, the styling pups. We have a wet, dry, and in-between look. Um, you know, the shave gel, you already know about that. The razors, everything you can get on tune45.com and I'll leave a, li a link in the description below. Notice how that blend is just coming together, that contrast is, it's spread it, right? It's spread, I'm sorry. Um, you see a light, medium to dark contrast. And right here I'm just being, I'm just detailing. I'm just going back and going over my work. And... All right, since I didn't explain it on the other side, basically you do the same thing on this side, uh, just connecting the fade to the other side. Um, so what I started with was the lever all the way open and then I closed my lever all the way and started working that line, started attacking that line. I'm not going all the way to where the green is at, but I'm just working that line out. And then I open my lever as needed to remove that line. I'm 
there it is. It took a couple seconds just to remove that line. And you just do the same steps, y'all. As you, once you get down the number system and the guard system of what blends into what, it's cake. So right here, the one guard, never all the way open, right? Then I work my way to the closed position to, to kind of blend out that line. It's not gonna go away completely. Um, you'll have to come back with the half guard and blend that out. And then we jump to a two guard, right? Because we wanna keep the blend a little darker around the parietal right ridge area. Um, versus going straight into a one and a half guard. Now you're going in all the way light versus leaving a little bit of darkness, if that makes sense. So right here, now we're gonna go back to the one and a half guard. Not the one guard, the one and a half guard. I'm also using a wall premium guard. Um, and we're gonna, you know, clean that line up. And this system may not work for you. You may just, you know, nitpick different techniques that I do and then put it into your own system and then, you know, run with that. If it works for you, you know, why fix it if it ain't broken, right? Just just kind of get different kind of tips and techniques from myself, Chris Basio, Loco, uh, Macho, Tyler, 360 Jeezy. Um, I didn't name you, I'm sorry, but you know you know what I mean. Just get, look at these channels, get different tips and techniques, and and um, and put it into your own system. Like, I, I, this is a system I developed in barber school, so I ran with it, but I also, um, you know, I also cut next to Shannon Craft. That, you know, he's been in the game for 25 years, and he does a lot of shear over comb, getting a lot of the dark spots out. Like, I never really learned that, so watching that just made me want to excel and try that technique, and now, it, you know, I love it. I love doing it. So again, shout out to Shannon Craft. Make sure you follow him on YouTube. Subscribe to his channel, S Craft Lens with a Z. He's dropping some crazy content. Um, so make sure y'all go subscribe to, you know, to Shannon. All right, so now we're gonna start doing some point cutting on top. Guys, I didn't realize that my camera was about to was kind of leaning right now my my ring light is kind of broken and i have to kind of ghetto rig it so it can stay still and the camera doesn't move but sometimes the camera starts tilting down so i apologize i, I didn't have the camera too high or high enough sorry but basically what i'm doing is i'm just point cutting to add that texture in there it's not really taking too much length off um it's more so just adding texture into the, the hair But he's a big Philadelphia fan. He's actually from, from Philly as well. So that's why he dyed his hair during the Super Bowl. And his team won. So I would've been mad if I dyed my hair and my team lost, right? <laughs> but I'm using a Tomb 45 shears. These things are super sharp. 440C Japanese steel. Um, I believe they're six and a half inches. This is like a perfect, perfect um, size for me as far as shears. I could, I used to cut with seven inch shears, but now when I go back to those, they just feel huge. It feels, it feels too big. So I go back to my six and a half shears, and um, I love cutting with these. Plus, it's good for like you know this type of work, texturizing the hair, point cutting. Light. Okay, so right here we're gonna do some shear over comb. Again, I want to keep that you know that straight look to the top, but also keeping some bulk around the bridle ridge area. But again, you see that cowlick right here on the side? It was disconnected, so I'm just trying my best to work with it. Um, he is gonna grow it out, so it wasn't the perfect canvas to do this type of haircut, but hey, I think it came came out pretty dope. You know, knowing the circumstances that I had to work with, that that blend is just blurry. Nice to struggle cutting this man's hair, 
about a year ago. Just because of the, the dense and the, the light areas, dark areas. Because right around the occipital bone area, it could be a little more uh, coarse. So you may find yourself using a lower guard or no guard to, you know, give the illusion that it's blended all the way even on both sides. And then right here, I'm just doing my thinning shears um, just to remove some dark spots. And like I said, this is something that I learned from my boy Shannon. It, it, and it works, y'all. It definitely works. Definitely brings that blend together. All right, so right here I'm using the Corliss and this T outliners. These are some straight hitters, y'all. Um, I'll have the link for these very soon. I don't have it just yet, but they're you know they're hard to get your hands on, man. It, it's crazy. You know that they, they're putting some higher prices on these trimmers. I wouldn't pay 200 for them, but I would pay. I would pay 150, 125 for these trimmers. And then once I, you know, get my hands on some, um, I'll do a review. And once I get the link and all that, I'll make sure to do a full review on these trimmers. But look at them. They're not even zero gap. And they're hitting, y'all. They are hitting. All right, so right here we're doing some, some slicing. And... The, uh, the perfect example that I can give for this type of uh, technique is it's almost like taking the pair of scissors and going across a piece of paper and not, you know, like gliding it, if that makes any sense. Just point cutting the front a little bit. Right here I'm using the 245 Shave Gel to apply that razor, make everything pop. We did not line up the bottom of the beard, we want to keep that natural, so. But this is what I told y'all, it looks like a high fade, but y'all can tell where the fade begins and you know what numbers are where in, in the fade. It just, it looks like a high fade because of the green and dark contrast on the bottom. Or the dark hair to the green hair. Either way, it came out blurry, either way. And my client loved the cut, so. Thank you, Eddie, for allowing me to record this video, this haircut tutorial. Um, hopefully, y'all y'all learned something off of this haircut tutorial. And a lot of people ask me why don't why don't I use the 245 razor? I actually did a good deed and I gave it away to somebody that needed it more than I did. So I had this one as backup. I just never really asked for another one or got another one. So that's the reason why I don't have it. <laughs> All right, so right here we're getting a bronze series nine shaver. Get that nice and skin tight. All right, yeah, so I did use the indestructible clay by 245. Just gonna go ahead and rub it in your hands, heat it up a little bit, and just rub it in the roots, rub it all over, evenly distributing it in the hair. He could have had a nice faux hawk look on top, but we wanted to drop it to the front and kind of give that crop look. So this is pretty much the you know the finished product. I hope y'all enjoyed it. It's just uh, apply the product, use your fingertips to apply the product in the client's hair and then style it to your, you know, how, how you want it. See that texture in there? You got a pinch and twist. That's how you get that, that those crazy spikes and those nice texture spikes. So 
whatever it is, here's the finished product. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe, share, and comment. Team Gifted, stay gifted.